Hey y'all, I am back with a new Science Simplified for you guys. So really excited to talk about this one. It's all about 10 minute walks and the science behind it and really the application you guys can take away from it. So Stan Efferding started talking about this a little while ago and then Mark Bell's been talking about it for a little while now too. So me and Ryan just started doing it. We've adapted it into our lifestyle. I really, really enjoy it. I recommend it to clients. We do this daily, it's something that we've added in and I absolutely love it. And it's cool that there's also research behind it to back this up. So I want to talk about first this paper that goes over kind of the science behind the 10 minute walk and then really talk about the other practical applications too that maybe aren't necessarily studied but that I think lend very good advice to people whether you're off season or prepping. So as we all know, physical activity is very healthy for you and very important. I think sometimes when we're focused on like physique or strength improvement, we can forget about health in general, but physical activity in general is healthy for you. It keeps blood glucose and level blood glucose levels in check. <laughs> You're like, what is she saying? <laughs> blood glucose levels in check. It can, you know, improve your cardiovascular health and just in general kind of keep body fatness levels in check. Now, for people who have type 2 diabetes, the current recommendations are at least 150 minutes of physical activity per week. Now, what's great about walking or something that is similar to that is, well, of course it's easy. You can do it anywhere. You can do it inside or outside with equipment or no equipment. And there's no like increased cardiovascular risk with it. So a lot of times when people have diabetes or they have other disease states, you know, in conjunction with that, they're not going to be able to like fully exert themselves, right? It's not like, oh, just go run three miles. Like that'll help your diabetes. Like, so walking is something that is low risk and very easy to do. So that's why they chose this in the study. And what's great about this study is that it's a randomized crossover design. So that means that everyone in the group did both interventions. Uh, there was a two week period of the first intervention, then a washout period of a month, and then another two week intervention. So they basically swapped when they did this. The average age was 60 years old, plus or minus 10 years. So about 50 to 70 was the group. And then they had actually had on average diabetes for 10 years. Again, average, so it was, you know, plus or minus a little bit there. So these are fairly older people who've had diabetes for a long time. So there was two interventions that they did and it both were 30 minutes, but one of them was just take one walk that's 30 minutes any time of the day. And then the other one was the post meal walking intervention. So take a 10 minute walk after three of your main meals, so breakfast, lunch, dinner, and have that within five minutes of completing the meal. Now really interesting, I thought, <laughs> I think all oh, this is interesting, but was before beginning the study, the self-reported mean walking time was 14 minutes a day. Um, seven participants, which was only 17% of the group, walked for 30 minutes or more per day. So these people were fairly sedentary. Um, and if they're reporting that, they probably were just like moving around for 14 minutes. It wasn't probably like actual like, okay, moving around for 14 minutes like in a row. It's probably just like, oh, I get up and go over here. And so very minimal activity for these people. That's important. I think also to know. The primary outcome was measuring postprandial glycemia over this three hours after a meal, and it was looking at the incremental area under the blood glucose curve. So it's lowercase i, A U C. That's what you, if you're gonna read this paper, that's what you'll see. And really, really interesting. So overall, postprandial glycemia was 12% lower during the post meal walking group intervention than just the go walk for 30 minutes at one point in time. And the biggest difference actually was the last meal because typically for these people, their diet, it was the highest carbohydrate meal. So this made the biggest impact, which of course makes the most sense, right? More carbs you eat, the more blood glucose that you're going to possibly have and the more that it can be reduced. So um, it was significantly different, particularly with the last meal when that was the most carbohydrates that were eaten. And also of note, which I think is important that we talked about, originally they were pretty sedentary people, and then there is either three 10 minute walks or there's just one larger walk. Overall physical activity uh, was greater during the post meal walk intervention um, than the just continuous 30 minutes walking. So sedentary time was reduced following each meal and walking duration increased after lunch and dinner when the post meal walking rather than the 30 minute walk per day was prescribed. So they are having better blood glucose responses. It's lower after the meals, after the post meal walking, and their overall physical activity is improving throughout the day. So it's like a double win in my opinion. But overall, the prescription for the walking was the same for both groups, but when they did the post meal walks, their overall activity was higher. Again, that's a win. And there was a significantly lower blood glucose levels after the evening meal um, when carbohydrates were high 
and they're usually more sedentary in general. So you're really getting a bigger like bang for your buck if you're walking after each meal rather than just having like one larger 30 minute walk. Limitation is of course this was an insufficient duration to really see if this was like an improvement in like their overall glycemic control like all the time like how long does this like okay this was a two-week study like what does it look like in a year if they do this so of course there's drawbacks in that sense um, but a lot of the other studies that have done this have been really really quick like it's only been like you know two days or like a smaller population this was 40 people which 41 sorry so that's a pretty good um, population and it's at least two weeks for both of the interventions so in two weeks if you're seeing a difference in one group versus the other I would say it's a win better blood glucose control and overall better activity level so keep in mind those people were sedentary for the most part they were a little bit older it's not like you know population that might be listening to my pod my podcast <laughs> this is basically like a podcast because it's not anything fancy but my videos um but still in general like better blood glucose control and more activity overall in the day i would take as a win for anybody no matter who you are so that's where the application has really come from like stan read this paper he's been implementing this and like i talked about in the beginning it's good for if you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to gain weight right so better glucose control, better, better insulin sensitivity is only going to help you in the long run be able to properly use your carbohydrates. So right off the bat, I'm going to take that as yes, I want that. That's whether you're dieting or you're, you know, adding food, like no matter what the case may be. It also just improves digestion. That's another huge thing. Like, okay, you're going to have better glucose control. You're going to have better digestion. Like these are all things that we all want after we eat. Right. Um, and again, this is going to help if you are trying to lose weight or you're trying to gain weight so it's kind of a like a lifestyle thing to add in it's not really like a when should I add this I actually kind of thought about that I'm like oh well, I don't want to like do too much right now if I'm not dieting and Ryan was like why like this is just like you're adding this to your life it doesn't matter if you're dieting or you're not dieting <laughs> I was like yeah you're, you're right so those are probably the two biggest things as far as like a health benefit obviously you're also getting more activity in so if you're pretty sedentary throughout the day it's very helpful just to like eat your meal get up and go um and you also just kind of like don't like lollygag around as much <laughs> i don't know what else, other fucking word to use besides that but like uh you're just kind of you know when you're like eating a meal and then you're like ah whatever i'll just like look at my phone i'll get distracted here like no okay i'm gonna eat my meal i'm gonna go for my walk and i'm gonna get shit done so you actually end up in a weird way being a little bit more productive too and some secondary benefits that i've noticed really is kind of the idea of getting outside going for a walk and just kind of like unplugging Sometimes I listen to music, sometimes I listen to podcasts, sometimes I get on the phone, sometimes I don't listen to anything and I'm just like looking up, you know, in the sky. <laughs> Sounds kind of weird, but you know, just like looking at nature and things and like really this idea of like unplugging uh, is really, really helpful because I'm always either on my phone or I'm on my computer or something like that. It's like all technology related. So a really good book on that topic is actually Unplugged by Dr. Andy Galpin. Uh, definitely check that out. So that's another secondary benefit. And then just the I don't know it really just helps me to like kind of kind of refocus so throughout the day i can get really distracted or like kind of like bogged down or like whatever again being on the computer and always feeling like on 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 with stuff taking that 10 minutes you know to yourself can feel really good and really like it just clears your mind so then when you come back you're actually more productive again all about all rooting back to like you're gonna feel better with your you know your digestion you're hopefully going to metabolize carbohydrates better with you know better insulin sensitivity and then also you have these other benefits like you know more physical activity you're gonna unplug and be in nature and you're gonna be more productive so i don't know why anybody wouldn't add this into their routine it's seriously a no-brainer to me you guys like it's been really really helpful i usually will try to get one to two a day uh two is what i really strive for um and i do not count this as cardio that's a question i kind of get a lot i don't it's not like i'm do anything challenging it's just i'm literally walking for 10 minutes outside um and it's, it's like a brisk walk but it's not like a fucking book in it like walk it's just kind of okay i'm gonna walk 10 minutes and you know you go five minutes and then you turn back around if you're you know doing this in your house or your neighborhood you usually will know the routes so i don't have to put my timer or anything on but if i'm traveling and i'm outside or something i just kind of put it on for five minutes and then i just turn around so really really simple you guys add this in try to get at least two a day um at least one but ideally two a day uh don't count this as cardio and there's so many benefits try it out let me know what you think tag me and use the hashtag 10 minute squad 10 minute walk squad shit <laughs> 10 minute walk squad <laughs>